going downtown Walking fast, places fast and I'm homebound And I need you And I miss you Yes, that's right, your eyes do not deceive you. This is an official microphone for the Nintendo Switch. You can even tell it's official, it's got their little brand right here. Now you might be wondering why it looks a little bizarre. Uh, that's actually because this is an attachable cover that Hori makes for it, so that you, when you sing, you can cover your mouth like this, so you can sing as loud as you want, or you just don't like people seeing your mouth while you sing. The point is, uh, this exists. Now you might be wondering, huh, I don't remember there being any karaoke games on the Switch. How did I miss this? When did anything come out? Well, that's because this, actually isn't available in the US. We had to import this. You can get them in Japan or in Europe as well. And as far as we can tell, the only game that actually uses it in Europe is Let's Sing 2018, a karaoke game that is not available in the US where you can sing some fun duets with your friends. Now, to be honest, we picked this up originally just because we thought the cover looked absolutely ridiculous and it would make a great Instagram post. After picking it up and kind of messing with it a little bit, I really started thinking more and more about how voice commands have been used in gaming. Now, yes, microphones are used a lot, primarily so people can do things like chat during multiplayer games. But there's a lot of games out there that have actually had more interesting experiments of how to integrate microphones into gameplay. It's actually very fitting that the microphone we grabbed is for Nintendo because they're one of the companies with the longest history of really messing with the idea of voice commands in games. Going as far back as not the original NES, the Famicom. The original Famicom had a microphone built directly into the Player 2 controller, which some games would make use of. One of the most popular examples being the original Legend of Zelda, where there were monsters that you could scare away by screaming into this microphone. So no and the reason why this particular example is pretty popular is because the US version of Legend of Zelda still makes reference to this in lines, but there's no way for you to actually do it because the original Nintendo did not have that microphone feature. And this is not something that Nintendo only experimented with during their early years with gaming. This is an idea they've come back to multiple times. In fact, they did a lot of experimenting with it during the mid-2000s with the GameCube and DS. For the GameCube, we had a lot of games that messed with the idea of using it as the main form of interaction, whether that's Hey You Pikachu, where that was the main goal, or offering it as an alternative control style in other games like Mario Party 6 and 7. Pikachu responds to your voice. Call him gently out of the forest. On the DS, the idea wasn't so much as making it the only form of control, but instead offering weird little ways to mess with the game by adding just an extra option, whether that's blowing into the microphone to interact with the environment around you, or using voice commands to call it specific items, something that was used a lot in the earlier Phoenix Wright games. Now, Nintendo is not the only company that has messed with these ideas. One that I think has actually had a really interesting history and has tried to do some more interesting, weird things with it is Konami. Going all the way back to the NES, they actually created a peripheral which would use voice commands and your head to control a game exclusively, which is this beautiful piece of tech right here, the laser scope. The idea was you could play something like, say, Duck Hunt, and instead of having to hold a controller in your hand like a loser, you could have this on your head and just scream fire while shooting at ducks by aiming with this little visor right here. It did not go well. I retire this in glory. And this isn't the last time they messed with the idea either. Years later on the PS2, and I think 2003, they made a game called Lifeline. What was interesting about this is that voice commands were meant to be the only way you controlled the game. You did not use a regular controller at all. Instead, the entire concept is that in the game, you're an operator giving commands to a character that you have to guide through a space station. Once again, tech wasn't fully developed quite enough yet, and so there was a lot of problems with this and didn't control as cleanly as people would have liked, but it's a really interesting idea that I kind of think it's starting to get time to start experimenting with again. Now to be clear, I'm not saying that every single game needs to have some kind of voice interaction. Let's not forget what happened with the Kinect. But I think it's really worth investing in the idea of having games that are built on the idea specifically of using voice as a form of interaction. And Nintendo right now, with how experimental they're being with the Switch and their history of just trying new ideas, I think it's kind of time to try again.